We want to welcome you to another Haynes Ministries of Word and Do season. I'm Steve Haynes. And I'm Susan Haynes. I'm Danielle Vaughn. And I'm Joshua Stephen Haynes. And we're going over the book of Colossians tonight. Last week we went over Colossians chapter 1. This week we're going to go over Colossians chapter 2. And I think before we go any further, I'm going to ask my wife Susan to pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the privilege and opportunity to come together and to share and to learn about your word. Father, we pray that you enlighten the eyes of our understanding, that we would know the fullness of your word and what your Holy Spirit is speaking to us. And we pray that you'd prepare our hearts to receive your word, that we might put it deep into our hearts so we might live victoriously and without sin before you in love. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, last week we went over the, uh, the Apostle Paul giving thanksgiving and prayer, and he talked about the supremacy of Christ, and he talked about his labor for the church, and we're going to get into Colossians chapter 2 and talk about freedom from human regulations through life with Christ. Amen. We don't have to be bound by human regulation, I mean, as far as church-wise, you know. Yeah man-made rules that contradict God's word and, and things like that but uh, I'm going to start in Colossians 1 verse 24 before I get into chapter 2 and it says now I rejoice in what was suffered for you and I feel up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body which is the church I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness. The mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations but is now disclosed to the saints. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery which is Christ in you the hope of glory. We proclaim him admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ to this end I labor, struggling with all his energy, which is so which so powerfully works in me. Uh, the Apostle Paul was telling us that the church was a mystery, but it's not now. You know, it was a mystery, and Gnosticism was coming in, trying to come into the church, and and heresies and all those things, and the Apostle Paul. He's just trying to remind everybody the gospel that he first preached to them. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, that Christ is supreme. That Christ is deity. That he is the son of God. That all things are made by him and for him. And uh, so Gnosticism was saying that Christ wasn't really deity. And that uh, knowledge was the end thing. And and there was some Judaism and some paganism and and it didn't really become more prevalent till the second century church and uh, but it's trying to come in now and Paul's trying to stop all this heresy and stuff so anyway we're going to start Colossians chapter 2 it says I want you to know how much I am struggling for you and for those at Laodicea uh, and for all who have met me personally. My purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full rich riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. See, it's no longer a mystery now. The church is no longer a mystery. Remember we talked last week, if Satan would have known the plan of God concerning the church, he never would have crucified Jesus. <laughs> That's right. He, he didn't really understand what was getting ready to happen. No. So now it's been made bold. Did you have something to say, sir? I'll let us continue. I do have something to say, but I want okay. to get a little bit more ground. Well, in verse 3 it says, In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. See, these... Gnosticists were, you know, had fine sounding arguments and things. For though I am absent from you in the body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how orderly you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. And so in verse 6, <coughs> excuse me, 
excuse me, it says, <clears throat> So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him. He's saying continue to live in him. Don't depart from the faith. Don't start living the way these, you know, this Gnosticism is telling you to live. Yes, we need to have a relationship with Jesus Amen. Christ. We, it's not all about do this and don't do that. We we need to know him. We need to continue in Christ and realize that because of his grace that we are saved and we need to communicate with him. We need to pray. We need to read our Bibles. We need to have a relationship with the Lord. Amen. Something that I like um, right before that, um, whenever it starts saying, oh, well, he's saying that he, well, in my version in the ESV, he's saying, for I want to know, for I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those at, at Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face. I like that he's encouraging them and telling them that they are all being knit together or that they are knit together in love. And he wants their hearts to be encouraged so that way they can fully comprehend what is the mystery that is Christ. And what I like that you were talking about is that the church was a mystery at that time. They, um, everything that Jesus did what needed to be made known to them yeah. uh, people nowadays at least in america and probably and other parts of the world as well have heard the story of christ yeah. but the yeah. way that they have heard it may have been twisted it may have been a different form or maybe the person preaching that message to them lived a different lifestyle outside of that speaking and i love this and i love that you said that because as we read over the bible in our minds, we already know about Christ, and everybody around us pretty much knows about Christ. And I, I am speaking generally. I know that it's not like that all over the world, but yeah. around um, around America, most people have at least heard of uh, Christ or heard of a church. And in here, the people that he's writing to, this is still something that's profoundly new to them. They have never heard of Christ before. They, If they have, they only heard of uh, the great miracles that he had done. They may not have heard, depending on who told them. It could have been a Jew. It could have been somebody that wasn't yeah. a believer or follower in Christ. They could have just heard all of the outside things, all the... Um, all the miracles, all the physical things, not just the spiritual things, not who he was or that he was the Messiah or the Christ that was foretold in the by the ancient prophets and the Old Testament. And I like it because he's wanting them to understand what the mystery is. And to us, we don't, well, at least to me, this is where I'm coming from. Yeah. I, whenever I see the mystery that is Christ, yeah, I don't understand everything that is Christ to this point, but his is so much deeper than that. It's not what you don't know now. His was um, a mystery that we have already attained, most of us that have yeah. accepted Christ Amen. into our lives. We understand what the mystery is, and the mystery is uh, the full greatness of God that is in Jesus, that is in us, and that full mystery is the salvation that we can receive through him. Of course, we don't know everything, but I like that he's encouraging them and and I, in verse 4 he says, I, and this is the uh, ESV, and I love the way that it says it. It says, I say this in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments. Delude is basically cause you to believe something that is not the truth. Yeah. Um, plausible argument is an argument that is a possible answer. It's more than possible. It's, uh, it's like a lot of different theories of different things. They're all plausible. They all could make sense if you look yeah. at it from a different light. And he's saying, I want you to know what the true mystery of Christ is. I want you to fully understand the depths of the richness of the glory that is Jesus Christ. So that way no one else can come along and give an answer or come up with something, a theory that sounds good and cause you to believe otherwise, delude yeah. you to believe in another plausible yeah. argument. And like you said, uh, Gnosticism, yeah, Gnosticism. Uh, they, they craved knowledge. So it would make sense that they would come up with a plausible argument, an yeah. argument that sounds good to the ears and yeah. the mind. Because there are some things that when you try to think about in relation to God, because we have a mindset that's of this world where uh, time travels straight and it has an end for us as human yeah. beings. And so whenever we wrap, try to wrap our mind around God, it it frustrates us because yeah. it's different. And I know I'm getting off topic. I just wanted to say that um, Gnosticism is trying to make a definitive answer as far as the mysteries that is Jesus, the mysteries that are God and Jesus. 
and uh, people want to accept that because people like to understand and that's one of our greatest weaknesses is there comes a point where we try to understand to the limit and that yeah. limits our own understanding of Jesus because he's far above our understanding and oh, once yeah. we accept that and understand that we will never understand at least until we get to heaven then we can start to truly embrace what is the love of Christ yeah. Amen and also I wanted to say also you know we need to be thoroughly rooted and grounded in God's word and I think to me I think that's what Paul's trying to tell them because even though they were born again and uh, like you said they had the this other beliefs coming in and trying to trick them and persuade them and I think he's also trying to tell them if they're rooted and grounded and they know the Word of God and they know the plan of salvation and they know what Jesus did for them on the cross and how he rose again and if they're rooted and grounded and know the truth very well then they won't be uh, swayed off base and, and led astray because I've seen Amen. this happen to people yeah I, I knew this uh, when I was in college I knew this young woman that had been saved Oh, I'd known her for a couple of years, and she uh, was marvelously saved, and she got baptized in water and in the Baptist church. And and um, anyway, we were over at a, a, a student gathering, um, and there were some people there that were, uh, it wasn't Gnosticism, but in a sense you could, it, they were, um, I'm trying to think what they were called, of the Baha'i faith where they uh, believed in that um, there was more than one Christ and you know all these different religious leaders the Spirit of Christ was on them and yeah. all this stuff anyway because she wasn't rooted and grounded in the word and this person that was well versed in this other belief started talking uh, she was I saw her being swayed I remember her she was just going oh he was trying to tell him some of his beliefs and his teachings yeah. and and she was going oh that makes sense and and if we're not rooted and grounded in god's word we can be uh corrupted and we can be, be persuaded persuaded yeah. like you were saying yeah but uh anyway in colossians 2 let me read verse 6 again it says so then just as you received christ jesus as lord continue to live in him rooted and built up in him strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness see god wants us to be thankful for our salvation amen, amen. Yeah. Yeah. realize where it came from not by our works or, yeah, or some other work. philosophy or something that we're saved by grace <clears throat> see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. Amen. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. See, Paul's telling them that Christ is God. You know, he's... he's amen. 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 They were trying to say that he wasn't deity and all that stuff. And, and there's still religions around that are saying things like that, yeah. we know. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. In verse 10 it says, And you have been given fullness in Christ who is the head over every power and authority in him you are also circumcised in the putting off of the sinful nature not with a circumcision done by the hands of men but with the circumcision done by Christ having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead <clears throat> When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them, by the cross well, that's I think that that's really powerful right there and I kind of want to clarify yeah a few things that at least came out to me what it means to truly receive salvation what are the effects of true yeah. salvation what 
what is this? What what do we have whenever we believe uh, Jesus Christ is our Lord and that he died for us, that we may be set free? Because salvation is more than just you get to go to heaven. Yeah. It's so much deeper Amen. than that. Maybe that's an easy Sunday school answer whenever you're trying to explain it to little kids who have yet to even base their own found, their own fundamental understanding of this current world, let alone the uh, world that that consists of God and Jesus yeah. and all of eternity. It's hard to wrap your head around just a few things whenever you're a kid. I mean, if yeah, uh, well, I won't go into detail. We'll save that for another time. But it starts off in. Well, verse 10, it says that you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. And they're talking about Jesus. In verse 11, it says, In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Circumcision was a requirement of the covenant that the Jews yeah. followed. It was something that they did eight days after the birth of a male uh, child. And that's what they did. That's what they believed in doing. Yeah. I won't go into detail, but that's just what they did. They cut off flesh as a part of a covenant. And this is saying that, and this is this is Paul's. And to me, Paul is a genius. Paul oh, yeah. has the wisdom and understanding from God. He is blessed to the utmost. He. I, I love listening to his reasoning because this isn't necessarily directed at us. He's not yelling at us. He's trying to correct some of the Colossians. He's trying to correct some of the way that people are trying to lead them into believing because there were a lot of Jews who became believers who still held on to the oh, law. Yeah, and the law said that you must be circumcised. Um, I, basically, if you were Jewish, you had to be circumcised. So they were telling people you have to be circumcised. Paul saying... You are you have been circumcised by a circumcision that is that is made without hands through yeah. Jesus Christ, which is the putting off of the body of the flesh. Circumcision of the heart. Of the heart. It's it, you are cutting <clears throat> off the sinful nature. You're cutting off the part of you that craves what is not of God. That's what we have been circumcised yeah. and freed from. And it says, having been buried in verse twelve, having been buried with him, and this is with Jesus. Uh, with him in baptism in which you are also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead That's what baptism is all about baptism isn't some symbolic thing That's not how you get yeah. saved But the reason why you baptize is because you are symbolizing your own burial with Christ and your own resurrection with Christ Amen. that is the that is what it means to be baptized baptism isn't like oh, yeah, I got dunked in the name of the Father, Father uh, Son, and Holy Spirit, the true meaning of it is that you're being, you are being buried with Christ, and you're rising again, just yeah. as Jesus rose from the dead three Amen. days later. And thankfully, we don't have to stay underwater for three days. That's fantastic. Yes, amen. But um, moving on, I love how it says in verse thirteen: and When you're you, raised again, your sinful nature stays under exactly there, symbolically, yeah. because that's, that's what happens spiritually in you when you're born amen. again. That that's your circumcision right there. And number 13, in verse 13, it says, And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, and this is, this it's saying, and you who were this before all of this happened, um, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. Everything that we've ever done wrong, that, that broke the law that God had already set forth, has been completely stripped away. And yeah. it even says in here that it was nailed to the cross. Amen. It was nailed to the cross. Jesus bore all of our sins and all of our transgressions, and he was nailed to the cross for them. They were nailed up there. It, Jesus took all of that from us. That's how we receive salvation. It's not just through his bur death, burial, and resurrection. It's actually through the physical presentation of him on the cross openly in front of everyone. Yeah. That, it, so that's, that's how we receive salvation is the fact that Jesus bore all of our sins. He took it all away. That, that way, whenever we received him, and we, re we receive that salvation, we are washed free of everything that we've ever done because Jesus died Amen. for that. And Amen. So that's what I like about this passage. Amen. We're free. Um, I'd like to, yeah, say something? Yeah. Okay. Verse 14, uh, well, in my version, it says, Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, and then I just wanted to point out this little, this little part here where it says he wiped out the handwriting of requirements against us. Um, 
in, in my footnotes of my Bible, it says this is a word uh, commonly used when mon a monetary obligation was acknowledged by a debtor. It means a signed confession of indebtedness, bond, or self-confessed indictment. So anyway, um, so he wiped out the debt yeah. that was we owed a debt because of our sin. Amen. But uh, this is saying that um, this is the same word for handwriting. Here was the same word for debts, like a debtor would owe something. And so he's saying he, he, he wiped out our debts. He paid a debt he did not owe. Amen. <laughs> There's an old song that, that Steve's quoting is he paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wipe my sins away. Yeah. And, right. and he, yeah. Uh, Jesus wiped it out. It's just like Amen. it's gone. Amen. It's just like if, if you wrote all your sins on a, on a chalkboard or a marker board and just erased them all and it's clean. He wiped them out. They're not there Amen. anymore. But I like that part in verse 15 about having disarmed the powers and authorities. He made a public spectacle of them triumph, triumphing over them by the cross. He literally went into the, you know, into hell and he disarmed the principalities and powers and made a spectacle of Satan in front of all his demons and all those things you know made a show of him openly Amen. but uh, anyway in verse 16 of Colossians 2 reading from the New International Version the NIV it says therefore you know this is the therefore the therefore comes after all this stuff we've just been talking about therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival a new moon celebration or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you for the prize. Such a person goes into great detail about what he has seen and his unspiritual mind puffs him up with the idle notions. He has lost connection with the head from whom the whole body supported and held together by its ligaments and, and sinews grows as God causes it to grow. Ah, in verse 19 it says he has lost connection with the head. The word head is capitalized there. The, so it's talking about head of the church, talking Jesus. about Christ. Yeah. yeah. These guys were getting off into angel worship and yeah, we, we believe that there are angels because the Bible tells us there are, but we're not to worship them. Yeah. But we're not to deny the ex their existence, but we're not to worship them. Yeah, and, and we shouldn't judge anybody with what they eat or drink. or or So what if they celebrate this and don't celebrate that? Yeah, not to well, this all know. goes back to, um, you know... Uh, the Sabbaths and the different Jewish traditions, I think, is what it's talking about, you think? Or, yeah. And, um, and, and it's good to, you know, know when you study the Bible and the Old Testament and everything, it's good to know about these celebrations oh, yeah. and these days because it's mm -hmm. like it's said up above. It said it's, it's a shadow in verse 17. There's a shadow of the things to come. It's good to know about them. And, to, and everything because it's all pointing to Christ. All of these things are pointing yeah. to Christ if you go do a study of them. But whether or not you observe them isn't going to bring, isn't going to earn your salvation or no. isn't going to keep your salvation. Right. It's all in Christ because these were Amen. things that were a yeah, shadow pointing towards Christ. That's good. And <clears throat> in verse 20. It says, since you died with Christ to the basic principles of this world, why as though you still belong to it? Uh, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These are all destined to perish with use because they are based on human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. 
He's saying, so what if you observe all this? You know, it's not, it doesn't have any value whatsoever in these sensual indulgences, uh, you know, based on human commands and teachings and regulations and having an appearance of wisdom, you know, with their self-imposed worship, their false humility and harsh treatment of the body. I guess people did penances and I don't know what all. You know. Yeah, I think it, it goes back to what you were saying about their uh, Gnostic teaching. Yeah. Um, by and uh, well, I guess by the heresies or the people that are kind of going against the religion or going against the belief in Christ. Yeah. It sounds like to me uh, that whenever it says, "Well, in the ESV in verse twenty-one, do not handle, do not taste, do not touch," and then in verse twenty-two it says, referring to things that all perish as they are used according to human precepts and teachings. It sounds like these people, the ones that um, are saying that Jesus is not the head, Jesus is not yeah. a deity, Jesus is not 100% God or the fullness yeah. that was God. It sounds like they are coming up with different laws or oh, different yeah. rules, yeah. and they're trying to control the way that the Colossian church um, is behaving or is presenting worship to God. They're saying, well, you can't touch this, don't eat that. Um, you you can't handle this, and probably referring to food, maybe, uh, whenever it says do not handle this, I, I don't know. It just sounds like they're making up their own rules, regulations, and the order of worshiping God. And whenever you take Jesus out of the equation and say, well, he wasn't God, where I, I don't know what belief they're trying to teach if they take Jesus out of what it means to be a believer and follower yeah. of Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Well, did you have any further comments? Um, well, I, th I think we just need to remember that Jesus is Lord. And, and remember what he did for us. And realize, you know, he, not only did he, he didn't just die on the cross for our sins and raise again. He also, verse 15, like you were saying, disarmed principalities and powers. You yeah. know, and, and he... He did look what Jesus did for us. He suffered, he died, he did this for us. Yeah. And if we look to Jesus and see what he did, I, I really feel like if we get the strong gist of this, that we won't deviate into false doctrine Amen. and things. And and there's another part of the scripture that says, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. And I think that uh this is how we judge anything. If someone tells us some teaching or something that we haven't heard of or doesn't quite sound right, you go back to your Bible and study the scriptures because this will show you what's, what is really right and which is really wrong, and you yeah. won't get off track. Amen. Um, were you about to say something? I'm no, just getting ready to close. Um, I just wanted to say one last thing at the very end that says, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. I just want to say that that's talking about the rules that the yeah, right. uh, the people, that yeah. the, the uh, well, whatever they were, the ones that didn't fully believe in Christ, the heretics or whatever you call them, um, they, they came up with all these different rules and regulations, but those, those rules and regulations are of no value in stopping the indulgence of Amen. the flesh. And, and the reason why that is, is because whenever you receive salvation in Christ, that is the circumcision of, of your fleshly body, of the yeah. part of you that craves the things of this world. Amen. Before you inherit the spirit of the most <coughs> high God within yourself, and it changes you because whenever we're saved, we are made into a new creation in Christ Jesus. We yeah. are a new creation in Christ Jesus. What I want now wouldn't be the same as what I wanted before Christ. Yeah. And I believe that that's the same for all of us. Before yeah. Christ, we could be a good person, but it doesn't make a difference. We still make mistakes. Oh, now yeah. that we have Christ, we crave to, and I wouldn't say be a good person, but I mean that's a side effect of having Christ in us is the Amen. fact that we live our lives differently. We don't... Uh, seek after the things of this world now whenever it says indulgence of the flesh that's not just sexual things that's also pride that's also greed that's everything in this world that makes you feel good about yourself but will not last with you through eternity Amen. money fame what is it it's an indulgence of the flesh that only faith in Christ and salvation in Christ will completely remove and 
this their own little man-made worship or man-made religion whatever you want to call it won't do a single thing to prevent that because he's he's just saying um that it it, in verse 23, 23, he says, These, and he's speaking about their rules, have indeed an appearance of wisdom in right. promoting self made religion and aestheticism and severity to the body, which is like punishment, you know, like yeah. don't do that, penance. Uh, penance and penance type. So it basically, activity. it sounds like they're being punished for wrongdoing, but it does nothing in stopping the indulgence of the flesh Amen. that is within us without Amen. Jesus. So. I just wanted to make sure that that one. I think we're going to close right there. We've gone over Colossians chapter 2. Now next week we're going to go over Colossians chapter 3 and we're going to talk about rules for holy living. This is one I want everyone to read for sure and study because we're going to talk about this next week. Okay. Rules for holy living. And... Uh, and rules for Christian households and we're going to talk about that and as is always our custom we always have a, a salvation prayer at the end of every uh, service whether it's a Bible study whether it's a church service no matter what it is and I'm going to turn it over to my wife Susan and she's going to lead you in a salvation prayer maybe you want to know this Jesus that we're talking about this one who disarmed principalities and powers and, and made a spectacle openly of, of the devil. And, uh, you know, that, that, was, that was a military action. Maybe you're a military person. You, you, wanna, you can be in the army of the Lord by praying this prayer if you haven't already prayed it in Jesus' Praise name. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, like Pastor Steve said, you know, if you never accepted Christ, uh, today's the day of salvation, and I hope that this is ministered to you. And, if, and maybe you had accepted the Lord years ago and you got away from God and the truth, and you want to make a rededication to the Lord, just use this prayer as your rededication prayer. And as you can tell from what we've been teaching, uh, we believe Jesus is the Son of God. God sent Him, and He lived and he taught the word and revealed the father to us and he died on a cross in in our place for our sins and then he rose again from the dead and if you want to accept him into your heart and you want your sins forgiven just join us with this prayer i'm going to pray it and then steve and joshua and danielle are going to help you pray Father in heaven, Father in heaven, thank you for sending your son Jesus. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. To die on the cross for my sins. And thank you for raising him again from the dead. And thank you for raising him again from the dead. Jesus, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And change me. And change me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In, in God's name, Amen. In God's name, Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are now a child of God. And I would like to encourage you to keep reading your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, go get you a holy Bible. Or um, get one on the internet. Google it. Whatever you have to do. Get you a holy Bible. Join us again next week for a word and do season at 7 o'clock Central Time. And also, like Pastor Steve said, I want to encourage you to read Colossians chapter 3 between now and then. Study it. And if you have any questions, please send them to us, uh, Ministries at gmail.com. Or you can call our phone number with prayer requests or, or email us prayer requests. Our phone number is 918-893-5522. That's 918 uh, Eight nine three five five two two, and uh, send us your questions. If you have any questions, call us and ask us. Leave a message on our uh, phone, and and we pray for all your prayer requests every Wednesday. We will pray by by name for you. Amen. And uh, also Sunday, we're having a communion service. We're at 6 o'clock p.m. Central Time. We have Hope Family Church, and we will be having communion. We do that the first Sunday of every month, and um, you can join us. Uh, 
If you're joining us live streaming, you can have some crackers or bread and some and some grape juice and join us in communion. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Amen. Till next time, God bless.